going. We've got a bit of a new location so that if you don't like what I'm saying, you can just throw me out the window. There's a bunch of new things, right? Uh, first of all, what do you think about the new glasses, eh? Nice? Second of all, I got like a lot of customization on my new laptop and um, I'd like to call it the biohacker. Um, the biohacker laptop, right? And check this out. Bam. How about that? That's pretty cool, huh? Can you see that? Yeah, I like it. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool, huh? I don't know whether I'm just paranoid or something, but I'm just like, I've got a double chin here somewhere, don't I? And like, my face is really chubby, and like, I'm really skinny otherwise, so I don't know how I could possibly adjust the situation. Like crazy. Anyways, a little tale for, you know, all you aspiring scientists out there. Just a little sort of publishing related story. I mean, it, it, it has been in the news, uh, a, f a few things in the news related to um, how much money is spent to access publications in science, for example. Uh, and a lot of scientists are sort of pushing open source, which is the ability for anyone to view this. And in most places, the funding bodies, the fund research that the scientists carry out before they write their publications, um, is taxpayer funded. So, you know, people don't really know this because they don't really know much right about how these things work uh but they pay for it all this nerdy stuff they actually pay for it they may not know anything about it they may not understand anything about it but they pay for it right so you think the least that they can be honored with is to be able to have access to what they paid for right so that's the situation and i just gotta have a little anecdotal little tale uh, of something that I tried to publish uh, in a perhaps not so traditional manner. As part of my final bachelor's degree year, I did a project that was experimental uh, and then also involved writing a literature review about something related to the experimental stuff. It wasn't on the experiments themselves. Uh, it wasn't directly coming from the experiments, but it was a review of the field that the experiments were part of, more or less. Um, and so I, I wrote a review, you know, as part of that, obviously, for my degree. And I got a really high grade in it, 95%. Uh, so I thought, you know, this is this must be quite good, I guess. Um, and I thought, this is quite an elaborate document uh, that links and describes a lot of the research that has been that has been happening and up to the current year. So it's very current. Uh, and, you know, it's not doing anything. It's just, yeah, I got a grade for it and I got a degree partly because of it. Uh, but it's not really doing anything in the sense, I mean, the purpose of the review is for people to read it at least do something with it, you know? So it felt like it was just wasted. And so I thought, you know, that seems a bit sad and pointless, right? So why don't I just put it out there where people can find it. If they if they search for those keywords or they're interested, or they want to find out, you know, I've written this thing, they can make their life easier. Why on earth could they not access it, right? And so I thought, well, you know, what do you do? You just, you submit it to journals that are somehow related and they publish it, right? It sounds painless. It turns out it's not painless. There seem to be just about as many hurdles as humanely conceivable to achieving that. Things like having to declare a grant number on the assumption that if you have a publication, then obviously must have been funded by something that has a grant number attached to it, which of course isn't the case for something like a review. And it doesn't take <laughs> millions of pounds for someone to read and write, which is what is required to update a review uh that's that's just not the case and it's it's a compulsory thing you can't say oh there is no grant you have to have some grant numbers and that uh there is a the traditional abstract which is a brief a brief description of what this is about um this one required a graphical abstract which is a visual representation of what this is about and of course for a review i mean you can't really visually represent 
the act of summarizing or the act of bringing things together you know so that again that doesn't apply again that's a compulsory part and if you can't produce that then well that, that the process ends there um and another one didn't have these ridiculous hurdles uh and it decided not to publicize this because they did not deem it urgent enough so some random person gets to decide what the entirety of humanity may or may not find urgent that sounds like a very productive progressive flourishing attitude to have to life doesn't it now the excuse used uh, by these entities uh, to charge a fuckload of money for these things that they did not write, work towards, or do anything related towards. Um, the excuse used to charge exorbitant amounts, as well as the excuse used to indeed make it a crime uh, to freely distribute the papers that are under certain copyright terms, is that the very foundation of science, the very foundation of scientific literature is the publicist's role as a, as a, almost a channel, a channel that links the researchers and their work and them writing their work in papers and the researchers <laughs> doing the work writing more papers because let's face it the public doesn't really read this stuff so uh, the researchers publish their work for other researchers to read and other researchers have to pay to read other researchers work when really they would be and they are more than happy to simply share this by default because you have to because otherwise no work gets done right so none of that really makes any sense. Uh, a sort of tangent to that excuse is peer review, the idea that you don't want crap in the world, so you need to make sure it's checked and someone with expertise can say, yet yeah, this is valid or no, this, this is not right. Now, something strange is happening right now. You have trivial websites. I, I don't mean trivial in a bad way, you know, Amazon, eBay, they're not trivial in a bad way. They're amazing and I love them in every way, right? They have, they are amazing in every way. Now, you know something is really, really wrong when someone thinks that a paper reviewed by, say, two people in this world, qualified as they may be or not, biased as they may be or not, objective as they may be or not, drunk as they may be at the time or not because they are people not gods you know because science is not a religion by the way uh it's funny that it's 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 reasonable to expect a paper to be reviewed by two people when a toilet roll on ebay may have five thousand reviews right two versus five thousand random drunk people or experts versus you know a big chunk of humanity you may be some sort of pseudo snob elitist type person, uh, as we all are secretly, and say, Jesus Christ, you can't possibly let people at large, lay people, get their hands on science and throw their opinions about science because we all know they're a bunch of idiots. What do they know about science, right? Um, there may or may not be a grain of truth in that. Uh, and if we, w if we lived in a world, say, uh, a couple hundred years ago when there truly were two experts in some science and that was it, that would be a fairly reasonable approach. But we live in a world where there are a lot of scientists. There are websites like ResearchGate where people communicate. There is a big community. Things go wrong. People ask questions about experiments. People have people have knowledge and experience and they help each other okay so there is a fairly thick base of scientists in the world and there is nothing stopping them from contributing to their community they don't get paid to answer questions on researchgate they don't they don't want to get paid to help other people they want to freely communicate like on yahoo answers it's like the yahoo answers version of, of scientific communication, right? Where people 
just inherently contribute together, right? It's kind of like the internet, that thing. And therefore, you could easily get opinion and discussion and ratings on papers uh, as you can on toilet roll. And that would be exponentially more valuable and efficient than the current system of getting two random people or whatever uh, to review it. Duh.